There's an activist by the name of Tyree Moorhead. Now this brother, you know, at one point in time in his life, he was, you know, definitely involved in, in some crime in his teenage years. Um, he's 44 years old. He's an ex gang member. Uh, at the age of 15, he spent nearly two decades in prison. Now this brother is, is a outspoken community activist um, with Baltimore's no shoot zones. And he promoted the idea of a grant program uh, for those who's prone to deadly violence. So his idea was that if we can pay, you know, these people, you know, some money instead of them going out here, just trying to get it. Now he says that I can relate to the shooters. He said, guess what they want? They want money. He said, I've seen the shooters. It says a small city. I know who the hustlers are. Now they say that violent crime in Baltimore has spiked since, you know, Freddie Gray had died. Um, in 2015, they said 2019, they had 348 homicides, a murder rate of 58.6 per 100,000, only second in the nation behind St. Louis that has a 64.5% uh, per 100,000. Um, now they're saying that, that it wasn't, he, he tried to sell it to people. He says that, um, you know, they can relate to him because he used to do what they, they're doing now. And you know, let's call it what it is. You know, you got to have brothers like that to go speak to them on the streets because they're not going to listen to somebody like me tell them anything, you know what I'm saying? But they'll listen to somebody that used to do the things that they used to do. Now, even though he's been trying to, you know, make peace in the streets, having these no shoot zones, um, he even been stabbed himself, uh, by the people that he used to, you know, kind of, um, be like in 2017, he said he was stabbed, you know, in the neck in East Baltimore. And um, he said that if he died, keep pushing them zones. That's what he said before falling to the ground and losing consciousness, but he did not uh, die. Now what he you know, was talking about, they, they'd done this in Richmond, California, where they paid people that was most likely to be involved in shooting people, $1,000 um, a month to keep their guns muzzled. And he said the uh, homicides plummeted 76% after the program started in 2009. Um, now they said that, uh, the former police department spokes, uh, person, uh, TJ Smith agreed for an out of the box idea, but he don't think that will work. Well, the biggest issue and why crime happens in areas like that is because of what a lack of economics, a lack of jobs, this system here in America cripples people that even get out of prison. If you do your time, you get out on parole, you just do your time, whatever, how you want to do it. You go to try to get a job. A lot of jobs say, oh, you got a criminal record. I'm not hiring you. Well, if nobody would give them a job, what do you think they were about to do? They're not going to starve. They got to have a place to stay. What do you think they're going to do? Use it, go back to what they were doing before. Cause at least they know they can get some money that way. This is the worst thing ever that this country like to do to people. If you've done your time to society, then you should be able to go out and get a job. Now I understand certain charges you would not want. For instance, I would not want a person if I owned a daycare for someone that was convicted of, you know, some sort of pedophile crap to work around kids. No, I just don't want that. So I get it. But if somebody that was, you know, let's say you got, you own a bank and somebody was convicted of embezzlement. Like, ah, I don't know uh, about that one. Okay. I get that. But if they went to jail, they had some sort of charge assault, uh, you know, let's say some sort of, uh, confrontation. Let's say it was a manslaughter. My thing is, okay, tell me about what happened. See my position about people that have a, a quote unquote criminal record. I don't, I just want to know what happened. Like, like what, what, what's the deal? Like what you got going on? That's it. And a criminal record that would not bar me from hiring anybody. No, it just depends on so what you did. Like, you know, touching children, deplorable to me. You can't work for me. Uh, raping somebody deplorable. You can't work for me. But let's say if somebody was an ex game member, it was war on the streets. They shooting at each other. Either it was him or you. And that was some of that gang warfare thing, but the guy turned his life around. He's not doing that anymore. Cause they got people like that that turn their life around. They've been out of jail five, six, 10 years. 
and people will still give them a hard time about trying to get a job. You cannot get those brothers off the street shooting if you don't give them some sort of job. Now a thousand dollars a month is nothing. That's nothing compared to, uh, you can make that in a job. That's not much. So what I'm saying, if, if, if the homicides plummeted by 76% by giving them a thousand dollars a month, just not to shoot nobody, then it tells you the problem is economics. That's the problem. There's always been a problem, but see what they like to do in the areas that black people live. They want to make sure to strip all the economics away from there. And that's what plummets any place into crime. You got to have an economic base. And at the same time, you know what they like to do, which is so insidious, they will sit up there and facilitate all these other groups to come in to the black areas. And these, these like say, uh, East Indians, you know, uh, different Asian groups, um, you know, Arabs, etc. They'll come in, establish whole businesses and everything in those areas. But black people that live there don't have no businesses like that. Like some of these people, that's the insidious part. And maybe if the same help was given to black people, to start businesses in those areas and hiring those brothers, you know what I'm saying? Then you probably wouldn't be having those issues and problems. So the problem is economics. You can clearly clean up the hood overnight. Literally, if you come with it, with, with a lot of jobs, good paying jobs and say, Hey brother, look, instead of how, how much you making, I'm making X amount of the, Oh, look, brother, why don't you come work over here? You can make the same amount of money. You ain't got to look over your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Cause I've always said that, that I want our business to grow big enough where I could, you know, get brothers off the streets like that and say, Hey brother, you ain't got to do that, man. Come on, come work over here. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the sad part about it in order to make those things happen, we definitely have to grow. And do you know, you know, a lot of black owned businesses don't want to advertise with someone like our company. You know, they don't because they feel that we're a little too black and they don't want to scare off, you know, white mommy and daddy from doing business with them. So they don't want to fool with us. I don't know if black folks know that, you know, any kind of growth that we have, we can help other people in the community. This is why it's very important. That, that, that people support us monthly, like on, on our Patreon, you know, like I said, we need to grow our Patreon again. Uh, we need to grow our, uh, you know, channel membership. So if you enjoy the content, want to see us grow, join our Patreon page. Just, you know, we show all the content before it's shown to the public, but everything that we have, you know, you guys have helped us with, we have applied it to the community. We have paid a good amount of money from what I've seen last year to people in the community that work for us between here and the continent of Africa. Um, so what you give us definitely will go back to the community, but the more we can grow, the more we want to help brothers and sisters get off of those streets because what they need is, you know, good paying jobs when they ain't got to be out there doing things they shouldn't be doing in the community. But leave me a comment. Let me know think about the situation in Baltimore and, you know, and shout out to the brothers and sisters out there in Baltimore. I mean, you know, it's, it's not easy. But this is why we need more and more black businesses to be created. And, and, and we need, you know, that support uh, from the community and all those who making millions and millions of dollars also support as well. Because if we grow, it's our responsibility to help our brothers and sisters get off the streets. It's not the government because all Jim Crow Joe going to do is, is get a new uh, three strikes law. <laughs>